All right, hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in once again to the Black Box Podcast. BBOR, Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia. At least once a week on this channel, I'm hoping to do a Q&A session where we read off your comments and we have a little bit of a discussion. Today we're going to be talking about Ross Sullivan and the case of the Zodiac Killer. First, I really need to say that... um. A small channel like this one, like, what would really be the possibility of actually solving the case of the Zodiac Killer? Well, it's very, very likely for some guy like me, and even, you know, interacting with people in the comments, you know, to actually get a definitive answer, who's the Zodiac Killer? But one of the first things that I would like to do is, can we eliminate suspects 100%? Is there any suspect on the Zodiac Zodiac list of suspects that we could take off 100%? And I was getting pretty close to eliminating Ross Sullivan completely. I was really thinking that, you know, maybe that's even some contribution that, you know, some among, you know, the, the video that I originally did on Ross Sullivan and the comments that had been coming forward and, you know, just a little bit of discussion, I was almost thinking... We were going to eliminate Ross Sullivan. However, however, we're going to go through some things and we're going to see that that's not the case and that Ross Sullivan is very clearly in the mix. Let's come look at our first comment coming to us from The One. The One says that um, there was a letter that was postmarked May 2nd, 1978. Unconfirmed, of course. Well, this is obviously a very important because Ross Sullivan passed away in 1977, and I believe another user actually left that comment as well, that yes, Ross's um, death date, or the date of his death, rather, was in 1977. Well, then what do we make of that? Does that rule Ross Sullivan out? Well, as uh, the one also writes here in that last part, that um, is an unconfirmed, that that was, you know, officially mailed by the Zodiac, but... That's definitely something that's going against Ross Sullivan. There's some more important information, though, that comes to us from a guy named Lord Rockman. Let's move on to our second comment. Lord Rockman writes that the perpetrator was thought to be six foot two, two hundred 200 pounds or more, and Sullivan was big but not flabby, but built like an American football player. Let's look at that first part of the comment right there. In the original upload, I made some comments about how I had been reading on forums that some people were describing Ross Sullivan as not just fat, but obese. We're talking 250 to 300 pounds. You know, I swear to you, I read that. And on my original upload on the case of Ross Sullivan, I provided a couple um, a couple links that, you know, where I got some of the information from. And I was just like, that would be something instantly. If Ross Sullivan were pushing 300 pounds, would he be the Zodiac Killer? No, because, I mean, for somebody to be 6 foot 2, 300 pounds, we would have had had different descriptions coming out. I think people would be very, very well aware if, you know, anyone who had come into contact with the actual Zodiac would be very, very, very able to describe a 300-pound person trying to attack them, as opposed to what we have. But Lord Rockman challenges that, and he says that Ross was around 200 pounds, big but not flabby, built like a football player. All right, that is something that's, you know, more supportive of Ross Sullivan, and it's definitely not something that, you know, I mean, I think that once again fits. With the case of Ross Sullivan, we have to be kind of honest. So many things about him fit his physical description. Ross also wore military boots very frequently. He had the military-style jacket. Those are definite clues in the case of Sherry Jo Bates, not to mention just in the case of the Zodiac Killer completely. You know, for years they were looking for a soldier. They thought it must be someone who was ex-military, but... You know, Ross Sullivan just wore military boots that he um, purchased himself. Louis Myers as well, you know, was someone, a different suspect that I talked about a long time ago, where, you know, he worked in a military surplus store where he would have had access to military boots. We don't necessarily have to be looking for an ex-soldier. But um, Lord Rockman also provides another very, very key detail about Ross Sullivan when he says that Ross Sullivan could drive a car and he drove both a motorbike and a Volkswagen Bug. 
in the original upload, I made some comments about how I had also read on a forum that Ross Sullivan could not drive a car. Now, if Ross Sullivan were 300 pounds and could not drive a car, would that rule him out as the Zodiac 100%? I would say yes. We know the Zodiac could drive a car, right? And we know the Zodiac wasn't six foot two, 300 pounds, more or less, more or less. I mean, that one is a little bit more um, kind of ambiguous, and that one's a little bit more kind of um, open-ended, so to speak. But if we have something here that um, Ross Sullivan was, you know, actually more like six foot two, 200 pounds, built like a football player, and he could drive a car, then all those kind of counter arguments are thrown out the window. And, you know, those are kind of definitely more similar to the descriptions that we have of the Zodiac. And Lord Rockman also wants us to know that he's getting this information from an individual named Mike Morford. Morford is spelled M O R F O R D. Mike Morford. He is, you know, an investigator who has, um, talk to people who knew Ross Sullivan personally and obtained this information. I mean, I think it's, um, I definitely think that there is something that stood out to me about, you know, the case of Ross Sullivan. I've talked about other cases on this channel that really did not stand out to me very much. For example, we had Jack Torrance, we had Earl Van Best, even Richard Gajkowski, like, you know, um, he is someone who didn't stand out to me where I was just, like, really entertaining the possibility. With Gajkowski, it was more like, oh, holy crap, you know? Like, I guess I get these really weird feelings. But that's all they are. They are feelings. Earl Van Best and Jack Torrance, I think, very, very unlikely any connection with the Zodiac Killer. Also, maybe you've heard of this guy named Ted Cruz, who's been accused of being the Zodiac Killer. Do you really think it was him? <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me. That was uncalled for. But um, with the case of Ross Sullivan, I mean, there are definitely some things that stand out as, you know, peculiarities. They stand out as, you know, just not only things that kind of make you want to cringe, but also that, it, like, it's almost like there's a possibility that he was indeed genuinely the Zodiac Killer. Ross had that very big history of um, mental health, you know, issues. And they believe that one of the reasons why there was no Zodiac activity from 1971 to 1973 is because Ross was committed to another mental hospital. I mean, if I recall correctly, we definitely know that Ross did spend three years in a mental hospital in the 1960s. And once again, the... All of this information is very accessible online. We also had something where Ross Sullivan appeared in a student film about murder, where he, I believe he played the murderer. And the next comment comes to us from just an individual who is simply titled Zodiac. Zodiac has left numerous comments on the uploads. Thank you so much for commenting, Zodiac. But Zodiac asks, where can I see the film from the film featuring Ross Sullivan? Well... Um, I don't actually have, I've never been able to find it myself online. I would love to see it myself, but no, I don't, I don't really know where we could find that. I think that it would be something that could be, prove a little bit insightful. And I believe Lord Rockman also had an additional comment about how Ross was very interested in things like, you know, theatrics and the arts and all of those things are very good, but you know, this stuff took a little bit of a dark turn, playing a murderer in a film. Also, we know that Ross took the cryptology class, right? So all of these things are coming together. Even, you know, just um, the Zodiac was referencing contemporary film in one of his letters. I mean, that's a bit of a stretch, you know. I was mocking that in my upload on Gajkowski when I just said, is everybody who watched a movie between 1970 and 1973 also a suspect, you know? And I was just like... But, you know, at the same time, we do have, it, there it is, you know, it's like Ross has, you know, the, he's a creative type, he's a mentally unstable type, so to, sad to say, I'm very sad to say that, but he was. And, you know, he also had this connection, you know, to um, making numerous references about things that 
Ross was, you know, infatuated with, whether it was the Beatles or comic books, and um, Mike Morfer has some more details on that. So it's like a lot of the evidence really is leaning towards somebody like Ross Sullivan. And I don't necessarily know with definitive certainty that he would have been the Zodiac, but things aren't looking good for him. And it's like we also have the widow's peak in Ross's hair. And if you look at the photos of Gajkowski, he doesn't have that. Also, for the longest time, I was very, very close to um, just labeling Louis Myers as the Zodiac Killer. I genuinely thought there was something about Louis Myers that didn't add up. I thought all the pieces in the Louis Myers puzzle fit. Louis Myers just does not match the sketch at all. He doesn't have the widow's peak, let alone come very different nose shape. Although there are some similarities between Myers and the sketch if you look closely enough, such as the lips and the jawline. Ross Sullivan fits the sketch very, very closely. And he even has the widow's peak. He wore those glasses. I mean, those things were very fashionable at the time. Every Zodiac suspect we find, you know, has wearing those type of glasses. It's like, I guess it was just a major fashion trend in the late 60s, early 70s. I mean, so many people wore those. But the point is, Ross Sullivan um, definitely matches a lot of those, a lot of that, a lot of the descriptive features of the Zodiac Killer. And the biggest reasons that I will tell you that I was opposed to thinking that Ross Sullivan had anything to do with this were kind of the stuff that I mentioned in the first upload about how he would have been too large and he would have been unable to drive a car. But Lord Rockman and Mike Morford have contributed some things that would have kind of indicate to the contrary. They are very, very adamant that Ross could drive a car. He drove a Volkswagen Bug. The next question is... um. Any sightings of a Volkswagen bug at, um, you know, nearby any of these um, Zodiac, near near, near the, any of the Zodiac killings? If we had, you know, a very definitive sighting like that, you know, I mean, like, say, for example, after the murder of Darlene Farron, was there any witnesses that saw any sort of Volkswagen bug in the area? I know that's a bit of a stretch, but if that were the case, and I think that would be almost hook, line, and sinker. I do confess, though, that I stated when I looked at the photos of Ross Sullivan, most of them are from the shoulders up, but I really didn't get the impression that he was 300 pounds. So this description that uh, Lord Rockman has provided, six foot two, 200 pounds, uh, big but not flabby, I think that that's a little bit more accurate because, I mean, you look at Ross's photos, he doesn't look 300 pounds, but somebody was posting that on a forum. And I even said, you know, like in my first upload, I apologize if, you know, I get any of this wrong. I'm really just going off of, you know, some forums that people have added some very, very important details. But, you know, on a forum, people don't cite their sources. And it's like, the reason I mentioned it, though, in on these uploads is, if Ross were 300 pounds and Ross couldn't drive a car, he would not be the Zodiac killer. And... I mean, 99.9%. .9 we know the Zodiac could drive, and we know the Zodiac was not, you know, some 300-pound obese individual. I mean, I'm pretty sure that, uh, that you know, the sketch would look a little bit different, and that, you know, um, the descriptions of the person wearing that hood would be drastically different. But, you know, the stuff that Lord Rockman has provided really paint a different picture of, of Ross Sullivan, However, though, we do have the, that comment from The One. What about the letter that was mailed in 1978? May 2nd, 1978 is the postmark. Ross Sullivan is, of course, dead in 1977. Was that letter just a hoax? I'm not completely certain. I mean, there are a lot of things about Ross Sullivan that are adding up, but you got to listen to this here. Someone was posting, and they were saying that Definitely Ross murdered Sherry Joe Bates. Now, I'm not saying that. Someone else wrote that, but they were like, Ross Sullivan is de should definitely be the prime suspect in the murder of Sherry Joe Bates. All of the things in that um, are connected between Ross and Sherry Joe seem very, very apparent. I can't say with certainty that Ross murdered Sherry Joe Bates because I don't know, but um, there are a lot of things that are really pointing out 
that really do not look good for Ross in that area. His bizarre behavior, he did meet Sherry Jo Bates on multiple occasions. His, the military boot print that was found near the scene, and um, I believe Ross was um, the last person to leave the uh, Riverside Library that night, and um, I believe that's connected, and it's like, ugh. The fact, though, that that wasn't investigated more, I mean, unless there is some information that the police would have had that we as the general public don't know that would somehow get Ross Sullivan off the hook for that. I admit it doesn't look good for him. And it's like, we also do have one big thing, though, that we haven't talked about yet, and that is geography. That, you know, it would have been very possible for Ross Sullivan to have committed the murder of Sherry Jo Bates and then moved into the Bay Area and then, you know, like, um, been in the, I believe he was present in the location in the in the Bay Area for the times of all the Zodiac killings. I haven't seen anything to the contrary, whereas, you know, with Gajkowski, we have that very, very big possibility that he was in both England, uh, sorry, no, but in both Ireland and Northern Ireland. I meant to say that he was both in the United Kingdom and Ireland. Yes, Gajkowski was most likely out of the country for um, a period of time, but I'm not done with Richard Gajkowski yet. There's Hopefully, I'm going to be making a new upload soon about some new information associated with that. And once again, um, I really find that, you know, there, Ross Sullivan is something that's starting to fit more closely. He's definitely someone that's starting to fit, you know, not exactly like a glove yet. I can't say that I have this, you know, complete sense of, you know, s security, certainty, fitting like a glove that, you know, everything is lined up hook, line, and sinker. I don't have that feeling yet, and that's a gut feeling. A lot of the physical evidence is really leaning me toward thinking that, you know, yeah, Ross Sullivan was definitely the Zodiac Killer. Who else could it be? But we know that he was interested in things like, you know, cryptology. He would have been, it would have been very easy for him to make a code like this. And um, he was also very infatuated with a lot of the subject material that is discussed in the letters, history of mental problems, um, and, you know, just possibly in hospitalized from 1971 to 1973, explaining that lack of Zodiac activity, almost always wore military boots, wore a military jacket, fits the sketch perfectly. He also has the widow's peak that is in the sketch, which is not in people like Richard Gajkowski or Louis Myers or, um, I mean, I, does um, Arthur Lee Allen even have that? I don't think so. Not that I'm, Arthur Lee Allen is old news, excuse me for bringing up his name. Ted Cruz doesn't have it either, by the way. He doesn't really match the sketch too closely. Yeah, excuse me for laughing. <laughs> excuse me for laughing. I shouldn't do that. But um, anyway, I would like to say thank you to everyone who's left a comment coming to the end of this one. Thank you for listening to this little Q&A session where we read off your comments about the Zodiac Killer and Ross Sullivan. If you have anything else to contribute, please uh, drop a comment below. I would hope to hear from more from people. And, you know, people have really uh, contributed some excellent things about the possibility that Ross Sullivan was the Zodiac Killer. And once more, the person that Lord Rockman recommends as a kind of an expert on Ross Sullivan, is named Mike Morford. Morford is spelled M-O-R-F-O-R-D. Thank you so much for listening, and until next time.